Hello, everybody. I am Caitlin. Is over there, James, who, Hello, drew, who joined the big guns, Michael and Royce and Chris on Sunday night, which I thought was fabulous. Oh, Michael Dolson in chat. Hi, Michael. Yeah. Oh, Diddy's in. Oh, you know, I was giving. Before we go any further, and by the way, hi everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, hey, Michael. Michael. Before, we going, uh, before we go any further, Michael. Yeah, answering to your comment about Diddy being big doo doo, I've written stories before. I was called into surgery, like to have surgery, like this, like months before surgery. You know, and I'm a writer for a living, so I write. And um, and um, what do you call it? And um, I've been writing my my editor and my boss. Hey, Hi, George. good to see you. And um, my editor and my boss. Hi, Jeff. Jeff. Good to see you. Thank you for showing up, everyone. Everyone watching, thank you for showing up. And um, I've written everything up before anything else has been released about Diddy. So not being able to write about it while I'm in surgery kills me because I've been reading because I've been writing all the previous stories leading up to where Diddy is now. So it kind of killed me, Michael. I'm glad that work has re a reliable writer to write about, but. I've been the main writer for, for that, for everything Diddy. So, yeah, I don't know. That's that's allegedly unholy stuff he's been doing, allegedly. So we'll see what happens, Michael. I don't know. I'm disappointed with him. I am very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. Very. But holy cow, that was just... uh. Just very, very, very disappointed. Very, see, I don't like stuff like that, especially with artists that I like listening to. I'm just very, very disappointed. I mean, don't mind me, people. It's just here. All right, James, uh, you want to tell everybody? Do you know? <laughs> well, well to show before I do my. At this point, allegedly, I'm not calling him that, but I know some people already have George, so it's just, it's just disappointing. Yeah. Allegedly, Jeff. Allegedly. Everything's allegedly. So careful. It's allegedly, people. So careful, careful. But um, I'm just very disappointed regardless. Very, I'm very disappointed. Very. Very disappointed. All right. So anyway, yeah. So I'll see you earlier. James actually joined uh, Royce in the house on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Royce, Michael, and Chris Elliot on on the show Sunday. So, James, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you thought about it? I was not expect. I thought it was going to be in the peanut gallery with you, and we we just watch everybody on the screen. But then all of a sudden, Royce says, "James, there's a link. Get up here with us." I'm like, I was like, "Oh my god!" Hey, you know, I couldn't I believe I was going to be up there. Well, I was in the chat telling you to get your rear end up there. Yeah. Well, he first put the link out and he said, James, I, I wasn't paying attention because there was James Watson there. So I got confused. And then then he said, get up here with us. I'm like, oh, my God, I was in shock. Well, yeah. But, yeah. What, what was it like for you? Was it cool? It was the most amazing experience of my life. I I tell you what, Roy, Royce, Michael and uh, Chris Elliott, they know their stuff. So it's it's fun to hang out with them. I I've known Royce for a long time. I know Michael for a long time. I know Chris. I guess for about a year now. He I should called say. me on Facebook, but we were still talking on Messenger because I thanked him afterwards. He says you're always welcome to be there again anytime you want. Oh no, Royce is awesome. He he's a good friend. I'm blessed to have him. I love him, man. Very knowledgeable too. Holy cow! And that was funny when uh, when Michael said to me, "I loved your Miss Piggy." Oh. <laughs> Did you see me in the chat? Everybody in chat goes, we want to see Miss Piggy. Did you see me? I'm like, don't encourage him. <laughs> no, I saw I saw them. They wanted Miss Piggy. I said, no, I'm no, like, no. I'm no. like, oh, yeah, James does really good on Miss Piggy, which you will not do on the show. <laughs> okay, but it, it was funny. But it's like, Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy. I'm like, no, don't encourage him. <laughs> but before I do my reviews and all that, or what the reviews are going to be this week, I have an announcement to make today. Of 
Go for a it. couple of things. Well, first of all, there'll be no stream Sunday because I'm going for Easter uh, dinner with my sister and s s at her friend's house or something. Nice. Easter and dinner. then the following Sunday, we're having our first uh, showing of the house, so I won't be able to do it twice. But I might try to convince Dave if we can do it on a Saturday. Maybe we can switch the stream over because I, I, I kind of miss doing it, you know? I love what I do. I know you love what you do. I and mean... then the big announcement for today is today is my one month anniversary since I quit drinking beer for good. Well, keep going. That's all I have to say. So I know it's not the end of the show, but I have to do it. Yeehaw! Ah, no surprise key, James. It's key. And quite, frank, and, quite, and quite frankly, I like you better off beer. No offense. Mm -hmm. I do. Don't take that. Don't take that too personally, but I do. So, but I'm really proud of you. I think that you're doing great, and um, I know it's hard, but you can do it. Yeah, I can. I yeah, I just, you know, alcohol is just one of those things. Or just, it's just not cool. It doesn't. You like it for a couple of years, and then you realize. I'm not happy with it anymore. It just doesn't make me feel good. Your body will let you know. I mean, alcohol does the same thing with my uh, immune disease. I can't, I don't drink it. And by the way, if anybody wants to know what's in this, this is lemon water. Lemon ah. water. I'm trying to cut back on the soda drinking, and uh, which I haven't had soda in two days. So. Wow. I'm like, oh, this is hard. You know, it's like, oh, I need the extra kick of caffeine, but I know I'm not, I should know I shouldn't really have it. So I've been coming back mm -hmm. to the point where I either have one a day or not at all. So far, I haven't touched any in two days. So that's why, that's why I add lemon to my water because it tastes sour and it's just, yeah, it does satisfy the need. Plus, it gets my water intake in. So I'm being mindful. You know, and I realized too that so, you know, it was great, but I only used it for comfort and caffeine. So then, um, yeah, so after reading somebody, after, well, after a friend of mine expressed a concern about staying hydrated with water and not soda, that kind of, you know, motivated me to go strictly to water. So uh -huh. well, I will admit, I do have to have my coffee every morning, just one cup oh, of coffee. Oh, I do too. That's it. Otherwise, my pieces of cubes are not together. That's me, not on coffee. That's. That's not happening. <laughs> I have to have coffee. It's the only way to go. I know I add sugar in it. The only thing is that I just have like coffee with creamer in it. That's it. I don't add sugar or anything. So mm -hmm. it's half I add in it. Other than that, that's it. I don't add sugar or anything. Every once in a while, I'll go to Starbucks to get my caramel. But other than that, that's it. I, oh, I got to have a little uh, sugar in my coffee because it just tastes black if you don't have it. How do you drink it black? Oh. No, you, it just tastes blah, like bleh, if you don't have any sugar in it. Well, you now the coffee that I have here is uh, black rifle coffee, and that stuff doesn't taste blah. The only time it tastes bleh is when I drink it black. Michael! Um, Michael! You just did my, my speech about P. Diddy. Yes. He is. In, allegedly in a lot of trouble. I uh, I was actually explaining to her, and people have suffered explaining this. I thought Michael was here. Uh, so Michael, before you know I had you know, this, you know, like months before I had it, I've written stories about the allegations against PD, P. Diddy just as they first began. So it's killing me that I can't write anything now because I've written every single story leading up to where Diddy is now for work. It's killing me. Mm -hmm. It is. It's like I've written every single story leading up to it, and here I am. You know, I'm not back at work till Tuesday, so it's like, ah, <sighs> oh, darn it. It's like, I won't write it. But, no, I allegedly, you know, with everything against with Diddy, allegedly, <laughs> bad. Yeah, I know, Michael. It is a bummer, you know, but it's bad. Allegedly, with all the allegations against him, it's bad. I don't even know what happened. Oh, uh, I don't want to. First, I hear about it. I don't want to talk about it. I'll look it up later. Yeah, you might look up for yourself on that one, buddy. Yeah. 
but um, it's bad, and it's just um, I'm disappointed in them. I really am. You know, what I mean, yeah, it's alleged and or allegedly, but yeah, I'm disappointed. I think that's just horrible. If it's true, it's horrible. And um, yeah. But anyway, that's my take on it. I just, uh, but people are are going after him. So I mean, and with all the allegations, you know, it might be true, and which I hope I'm wrong. But of course, but with everything that I've read so far, it's bad, really bad. I mean, it started. Uh, was it April? I think like late January, early February, everything started. So I've been writing since about since then until now. So. Hey, Lisa. Just very disappointed. Very disappointed. There's no such thing as getting canceled. I think, if anything, I think, he, if anything were to happen, he's going to spend some time in prison, as far as I'm concerned. If anything were to happen, he's going to prison. Everything's still alleged, you know, allegedly, and so I tend to keep it that way. <sighs> Well, yeah. Well, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know, Lisa. It could be over. It it, it really falls on the hands of the, uh, you know, it. Anything's possible now. I mean, I'm just really appalled with everything right now. It's just like as I was starting writing, like, oh, what you're doing now? I'm reading while well, I'm recovering from surgery. I'm reading this stuff. I'm like, come on, you're kidding me. You did what? And I'm like, oh, I'm very disappointed. Oh, Dave's here. For good cancel, how about incarcerated? Yeah. Hey, Dave. Yeah, I'm feeling that way too, Dave. That's just, it's unfortunate. If all the allegations are true, that's really unfortunate. Yeah. But I will say I am disappointed. Very disappointed. And so, and I like some of his music, but now I'm very disappointed. Just, hmm. It hurts me. But anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm very disappointed. That's all I'm going to say. All right, James, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, baby. Let's do this. Ooh, well, I want to thank you once again, Michael, for having me on with the big guns on Sunday. That was a, that was a thrill guns, for yeah. me. I was so nervous because I didn't know what to expect. And I was like, wow, I'm up here with Chris Elliott, man. I'm up here with Royce in the house. I'm up here with Michael Nolan, the big guns. I never cool. thought I'd be, uh, I was so honored to be there with you guys. So, um, first of all, before I get to my review, uh, Dave, the 7th of April, I won't be around to do a stream that day because we're having our first open house, like our, our sh a showing. So, oh, that, but if you want to, if it's up to you, if you want to, maybe we can do a stream on the Saturday so, uh, so we can still have some fun. I had a ball too, Michael. That was really fun. Well, Michael, by the way, you only swore once, so that's a record. Wow, I didn't even notice. Yeah, I'm <laughs> telling. <laughs> so for my you movie review, on, you're so yeah. good. You only swore once, according to my yeah. chapter. So. <laughs> so for my movie review for Friday, I decided to watch because since I got it, I haven't watched it yet, but I've seen it on on Plex from JJ. So this is my movie for tomorrow. Oh, I Those saw that. Ghostbusters Afterlife. I love That's this movie. It's so good. I like the little Stay Puff Marshmallow Men. I want one uh, of those. I do. So I want to rewatch this again so I'm ready because my sister might take me to see the, the new one. The oh, what? Frozen no, Empire what? or something. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see that. So that's what's going to be for tomorrow. My Ghostbusters there. Very and cool. tonight on the Fab Forum, they are going to be having their guest, Gary Clark Jr., Oh yeah. I He's don't know much about it. this dude, but it should be interesting. Cuz I always learn something new. And uh for those who are not in the know, well, uh I'm, I'm going to tell you that today is my 1 month anniversary when I gave up beer for good. So 1 month tells you I'm doing good. I'm I'm on the right track. Amen. Oh, it's really uh, and I'm so happy. And another thing Kate told me, uh, Michael, she behaved herself. <laughs> Honest to God. 
She told honest engine. She told me. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> and now back to our regular scheduled program. Ding. Ding. <laughs> oh man. No, okay. I can't behave, people. Okay, and believe it or not, I was. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I can behave. You know, it's just I was very well behaved. I've behaved before too, so I don't know what this whole spiel is about. Caleb not behaving. <laughs> Royce and I are trying to clean up our language, Caitlin. Royce was on the binge there for a while too. Uh, you know, we all have things that we need to work on. You know, yeah. I, I just have fun counting it. Because you just made it more amusing. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, according to my track, you only cursed once, so I'm very proud of you. I know that was very, very hard. And, and I don't think Russ even cursed at all, which I'm sure that was even hard for him. Oh, so, kudos to you guys. Keep working at Keep working at that. <laughs> That's <laughs> try straight face. So, yeah, I'm jealous of, you go see the new Ghostbusters movie? I am so jealous, because I can't, I'm not leaving the house with my cast on, so... Oh, I'm excited to go see it. Oh, I want to. I I've been a Ghostbusters fan since I was like uh five. So and from the previous, I saw Dan Aykroyd's going to be in it. Ooh, he's back. Ooh, that's sour. Ooh. And so is Slimer. Seriously? Yeah. What well, Slimer's my favorite character. Slimer and um the giant. Marshmallow guy. The state puff marshmallow man. Well, or he's the dead now because uh, they, 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 he or exploded. Or what Mr. calls the Michelin tire man. <laughs> she goes, yeah. I'm like, you know who that is? And she goes, no. Uh, is that? And she goes, yeah, I do. I go, who? The Michelin tire man. I'm like, jeez. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we do have some things to talk about. So I gave you two songs to listen to. Let's talk about the Pearl Jam one, Runaway. What did you think about that? Ooh, I was rocking out. That was some heavy guitar. Oh, man. I was now, picturing that, the lamb playing that guitar you, riff. You should recommend to because there are some, um, in Pearl Jam's Runaway, there are some gnarly, um, pretty gnarly, sweet guitar riffs that really just, just, oh yeah! It's like the very first time I listened to "Runaway" by Pearl Jam. You know, I'm just already banging my head to the music because it's that good. I think it's also it shows them they have the heavier side of the band too, in my opinion. Yeah, it's almost bordering on heavy metal. It feels like it's more like um, what was they like? Well, maybe well maybe a little heavy metal. I was thinking more of like um, like heavy punk almost. Heavy thrash, heavy punk. Yeah. Because it has that. Bah, 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 bah. It was shocking. I was like, wow, this is, I've never heard Pearl Jam play that heavy before. Oh, yeah. No, they play heavy. Wow. Um, I got to take my sweater off. I'm hot. Okay. I'm sweating here. Yeah. No, uh, no flashing. No. I'm not flashing. Just taking, <laughs> just taking this off. I'm hot. But, um, no, um, I, I, I Eddie Vedder's voice sounds like just super strong. Probably just as strong as ever. Cause I remember like listening to Pearl Jam when I was like in my teen teen years and um and hearing Eddie Vedder's voice, you know, it's just amazing. And now hearing Vedder perform Runaway, you know, um I think his voice has gotten better, a lot stronger too. Mm-hmm. But um I'm really liking the, uh, hi. Hello, Zara. Is that one of your friends? Yeah, from my uh, Hi. Yeah, nice I know her. You. Nice to meet you, MK. Nice to meet you. But, yeah, I liked it. You know, it kind of just showed that, you know, Pearl Jam still have it. Mm-hmm. And, um, I know what the previous song was. It Dark Matter. That one is just as heavy, too. It really is, which I like, you know. But I'm really, um, quite, I'm pleasantly happy with Pearl Jam. Likewise, Rico. Likewise, I see you, too. 
And um, yeah, I like it. I think it has good taste. It kind of just shows where the band is and how the band is still capable. Of- hey, mom. Oh, hi. Hi, Patricia. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I get it. I'm in this, uh, this thing till April 15th. I get this off. And, and then April 18th, I start physical therapy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing better. The arm's starting to hurt less, thankfully. Well, that's good. Are you still on your painkillers? Uh, I yeah, but I I just been using generic over the uh, counter. Zara, okay, Zara. Oh, please to meet you. Well, thank you for dropping by. Please to meet you. Yeah, but I'll be all right. Yeah, it's finally died down, so I can actually hold my. Uh... Yeah, I know. I was like, I got. One heck of a weapon right here, you know. I could just, you know, fling my arm and just <laughs> knock somebody. Well, if you hit something hard enough, you'd probably break the cast off. Or just what? Do, have them take the cast off and bring it, bring it home. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I can see you doing that. <laughs> you know, Spaghetti trues with the cast. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, they don't go slugging, buddy. But yeah, but it'll feel so good. Yep, King. I will slugging, buddy. And August first starts uh, roller derby. Oh, I, I let the cat out of the bag. Oh my god. So oh, I can't go on skates, Dave. <laughs> I can't go on skates. I can't balance at all. My joints are really bad, people. My even if they're not replaced. No, but here's the thing. Vegas might be happening in October. Uh, Beat that. So, uh, but anyway, Pearl Jam. I think they're. I'm glad they're still around. You know, I think the younger generation needs to hear their music. Yeah. And uh, I'm happy with it. What rating would you give that? I would give it a ten on ten. Yeah, I'm gonna give them a ten. Ten out of ten. I think you know Pearl Jam is a. Uh, just a dynamic band, you know. It's like they bring back so much nostalgicism and all that jazz, and um, and they're also one of the bands that makes me feel like I'm young again. Are you talking about track running? If so, I love the hell out of it. Why hook landed track? Trust track. Run. Uh, the only time I'm gonna even, even see myself run will be will be what. The only time I'll see myself run will be uh, if there's a clown chasing me, uh, if there's a snake. Uh, oh, if if wax figures start moving. If I'm in a wax museum and any of those figures actually start moving, I am running out of there for my life, just like Iron Maiden. Run to the hills, run. I am not kidding. My... my my worst fear, not just the wax figurines, is that that you're in a morgue and you see all these you know, dead people. My fear is that every single one of those dead bodies on that table will get up and Whoa. walk home. Nine out of nine, no cowbell. You want cowbell in that song, George? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave. And so, <laughs> I'm like, oh, Dave. But it's like, I'm serious. If I saw a girl step by walk in the morgue, walk off that table, I am so out of there. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm going to be worried about the zombies. Because the zombies will be easy to kill. Because all you got to do, do is kill them and then double tap, which is kill them again. So double tap. I watch, I love zombie land people. I know this stuff. Uh-huh. Oh, clown. Uh, if I see any clowns, I am out here before James can say yeehaw. I'll probably ditch him at that point. <laughs> yeah, well, you like the yeehaws. I got you saying it a couple of times, too. Because, it's, no, it's just like, just the fact that those wax, I think it's great that people who work there, I love it. I love the fact that people who work are scare people. That's great. That's fun. I love it. It's just, I have a phobia of that. Those wax figure, <laughs> figures, statues, they'll get up and start walking. Or they move. They're, they're you know, it's just, uh, it scares me. I'll be. Mm. That's, that's why I don't even avoid going to wax museums. Well, 
I, you know, it's just like, I'm absolutely terrified of that stuff. But dead bodies walking off a table in the morgue. Uh -uh. I'm done. Uh -uh. <laughs> Caitlin's gone. Caitlin checked out. Bye bye. <laughs> wow. If a zombie came at me, I'd ask for his autograph. I love time of the season. <laughs> That sounds cool, uh, Michael. Yeah. The only zombie I can think of is Rob Zombie. I like to get his war graph. That's me cool. too. Or well, there's a band called Rob the Zombies. Zombie last night his radio show, he was playing um, Living Dead Girl. There's a oh. band called the Zombies too. I don't have problems with zombies in general. I think so. My theory is a zombie apocalypse. I'll be okay. But if we played, if if we had to live like. Like in the movie, A Quiet Place. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would not laugh because I have animals and they don't shush. So I'll be gone quick. I can, I promise you that. Oh yeah, you'd be dead in a nanosecond, I guess. Yeah, but zombies. I probably survive a zombie apocalypse. All you gotta do is, you know, they love banjo music, and all you need is a banjo to um, to play the banjo when you're walking with it. Easy. Yeah, that's my favorite part in Zombie Land, the first one. That you play, no, Willie Harrelson plays the banjo. There goes yeah. a, here comes a zombie. <laughs> you know, like, that's... I love when they go to the White House and, it, and they're taking all the plates and they're skeet shooting in the White House. You know, it's just, I love Zombie Land 2. I heard there might be a third one coming out. We'll see. Oh, snap. What y'all saw the other day? I saw it yesterday. What was it? Saw 11 will be released in September. Oh, my God. They're milking this franchise to the hilt. Oh, it's not done because all they're doing is that they're going from uh, the previous... Um, what what led up to the previous movies. That's what they're doing. Wow. And I'm like... I, I love Saw. That's horror movie franchise is brilliant. Just brilliant. So, yep. I'm not worried about zombies, but the robots who will limit limit out uh, movements. Uh, you know, robots. Yeah, that could be. Robots can be a threat. Yeah, they can be a threat. I can see. I know that AI is starting to take over, too, which does bother me, especially for the music industry, too. I mean, me becoming a music journalist, I showed up, you know. Inspired by all these bands and artists, and now AI is taking over the recording process, or some of the recording process, some of the writing and stuff. It's just like it takes the joy out of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't sign up to you know to write about AI writing this song. I showed up. I became music journalist to hear bands and artists' music that they wrote. You know, that's what I signed up for. Not the whole... But if used correctly, but AI is... Oh, thank you! Thank you so much, Zara. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Zara. I appreciate you. Thank you. And, um... So, but if it's used correctly, kind of like with the Beatles now and then, that was used correctly, I think. But my fear is that AI is going to take over the whole thing, and it's just it's just going to ruin things in ways. But I really do think there are bands and artists out there who um, who uh, will not use AI and actually use their talent. So, and that's why I look for. Mm hmm. You know, that's why that's why I love being music journalists. I like listening to bands and artists who you know use their talents to write music and. Get to know them and uh, and all that jazz, and that's been my whole life too, as well. So, and, and I'm just happy to be able to still do that while I'm here. So, it's always a blessing. Yeah. Didn't we it's speak me. AI and music already? Have we forgot Milly Vanilli? Oh God! Oh Lord! Don't you get me started on that one. <laughs> Scandal. That, is, that was a scandal in capital letters. 
scandal. They even got the Grammys taken away for what they did. God. What were they thinking? Oh, Lord, that's sour. Whew. That's good. Don't ask how many lemons I put in that water. Don't ask, but... Whew. That's good stuff. But, yeah, doing experience AI and music. Yeah, that Milli Vanilli. Mm-hmm. Mama always said that a zombie is as a zombie does. <laughs> You're right about that, boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what on earth are you doing? Come here. What? I'm live right now. What? Oh. Say hi to the waffles, everybody. Come here, waffles. Waffles. Come here. Come here. Where are you? There she is. You hi, she waffles. Is. There she is. She's a good girl. She's a good girl, huh? Say, I love, say hi, everybody. I love my bubbies. Um, I'm, a I'm a good protector. Scandal? They sure weren't the warrior. Uh, who do you speak of, uh, Dave? Who's the warrior? Yeah, you might have to elaborate on that one for me, Dave. Can you please? Yeah. We are both here. There you go. You know, when I was clicking onto the second song, the Osborne Brothers, you know what? I thought it was Ozzy and, a, and one of his brothers at first. I'm like, no. they, made, they did no, a duet. I should have clarified to you that Brothers Osborne are a country duo. They're brothers, obviously, but they're a country duo. Because when I saw Osborne, I'm like, Ozzy? No. No, no, no. But what did you think of the song Break Mine? It was good. It was good. Yeah, um... Oddly enough, Brothers Osborne, oddly enough, they were one of the duos that actually found on Pandora just as they were first starting out. And they started with a song called Rum, then they got then they released what uh, Stable Longer, Shoot from the Hip. <laughs> yeah, the and um, I was really amazed with their style of country music, and I was also really amazed with their vocals. Mm -hmm. And I actually had the honor and privilege to um, actually see Brothers Osborne at our Stampede Live with my brother Josiah oh, wow. in 2019. Hmm. And they were phenomenal. I had a blast watching those two. They actually had the whole um, Stampede Stadium live dance. Oh, wow. It's like, yeah, so my brother and I were at point A. I saw... Oh, here we go. Okay. There you go. I was doing I was doing a play on the word scandal. Millie Vanilla, you called it scandal. I was referring to the song The Warrior by the band Scandal. What? Oh, okay. Oh, look what Michael says. Put Michael. Oh, 21. Well, go All see. Right, I'll put Michael. Uh, Michael. A lot of bands these days are more Memorex than live. Memorex? Hmm. What's Memorex? Uh, Memorex is a type of uh, cassette tape you can buy. I know. Oh, that, oh, 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 I see what you're saying now. Okay. Yeah. My call, like Memorex. It's like Memorex. Is that like a? For me, I thought it was like uh, ear medicine. But I'm like, no, that's not it. No, no. <laughs> it's a. It's an audio cassette you can buy. No. Oh. Now get. Thank you, Michael. I must have uh, blank CDs for with. Oh yeah, Memorex is also blank CDs as well. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, Caitlin. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So the brothers Osborne, they had like my brother Josiah and I, well, my brother Josiah and I were sitting in point A, and point B goes all the way around the stadium to the end on the other side. So there was this long line of line dancing to a song from point A all the way to point B. Wow, that was awesome. I wanted, honestly, people, I wanted to partake in that, but I couldn't because I had bad knees at the time and it would be too painful. So I'm like, darn it. That was, because I looked really fun. Even people wearing sneakers were line dancing. Hmm. It was great. It's yeah, I would have done if I, I mean, at the time, this is before I had my knees replaced. So at the time, you know, I was in really bad knee. Both my knees were horrible. You know, that would, that would have killed me right there. But now I have new knees, absolutely. So, 
But, uh, but Brothers Osmore, Break 9, that's actually a really cool love song. They're really, they're notoriously known for their love songs. Notoriously. Wow. And their country vibes and stuff. But mm -hmm. I like it. It's an awesome song, because it's basically, it's, it's like, a, in a ways, Break 9 is like, it's a positive love song. Okay. Because all he's saying is, kind of like, oh, man, how the how do I word this? I'm trying to word this, people. Um, you could break my heart. Yeah, you don't have to let your heart be broken. You could break mine. Mine's already been broken. You can break mine. But if you ever need a friend, I'm no. That's what it is. Like you could break mine. I'll be your friend. You could break my heart. You know, I don't want your heart to break. You could break mine. Yeah, I think that's kind of like. Kind of like that's kind of no offense, but that's kind of like that's kind of cute in a way, kind of heartbreaking and cute in a way, in my opinion. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes, I remember that now. Memorex's model back in the day was is it is live, it live or, or is it Memorex? <laughs> I remember that. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yes. So, ba so basically, he's saying, like, like you know, it's okay. If you won't break my heart, it's okay. Because it, in ways, it's like the singer saying, my heart's already been broken. It's okay, you can break my heart. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's why he says, break mine. Because he's already been broken. So it's like, he doesn't feel anything. And so it's like, that's kind of romantic, but at the same time, like, that's kind of heartbreaking. I don't know where I used to experience it. So... I like it though. I mean, it's very romantic in ways, you know. Uh, there's like another song. Oh, what was it? Oh, I can't remember the name title, but it talks about. I wasn't. It's like I can't remember. It was a great song. It's a great love song by Brothers Osborne. It's like. I can't remember me. I can't remember the old me when I met you. Mm -hmm. Gold. That's, wow. that, that one is just gold. I'm like singing. I was singing that song, Our Stampede, at the top of my lungs. That is just gold. I can't remember it. But there's a song called um, Pushing Up Daisies. And basically that song is about how achy breaky here. Funny. Funny, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny hair. Breaking, breaking hair. No, but there's this song called Push Up Daisies, and that is a romantic song. Look it up. I'll send it to you, James. You can talk about it on Friday, but it's called Push Up Daisies by Bros. Osborne. And uh, basically, it just talks about how two people are in love, and their love will go on until they're pushing up daisies, as in their grave. Yeah. yeah. So I like that. Our love will go on until we're pushing up daisies. That is a romantic song. I like that one. That, that's a good one by him. Mm -hmm. And then there's a great party song called it Ain't My Fault. And that's a great song. I love that song. That, they, they performed that song as the encore before they left the stage at their stampede. My phone auto-corrected. Sure, oh. Dave. Sure. Right. Sure. But, but It Ain't My Fault. That's a fun one. You know, I'm Guilty of a damn, probably French, damn good time, but it ain't my fault. Da, da, da. It's it's a great, it's great life. It's one of my favorite songs by him. But um, pushing up daisies and break mine, and the oh, whatever that song title, I can't remember, but I know what the song's about. Those three songs are just gold. But look them up, guys. I promise you, they're good. They're gold. Don't you just love a good step on me? Beat Me Baby's love song? Huh? <laughs> and what are you listening to, Michael? You're not listening to Marvin Gaye, are you? <laughs> <laughs> or Barry White? <laughs> Michael sighing. <sighs> step on me, Beat Me Baby love song. I, I don't know any love song, but Step oh on Oh my god, I'm a genius. I'm a freaking genius. I just thought of something cool, Kate, and what do you think of this? I'm going to have the ultimate panel, and we're going to discuss Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Clip Band, the album. Me, Michael Nolan, 
Royce in the house, Chris Elliott on my screen. What do you think? Can you see it happening? Oh, I can see. I can see that. Yeah. I want to do it. Well, yeah, schedule through Michael and Royce. Yeah. And Chris, of course. And Chris. Yeah. What do you think, Michael? You want to do it? I think you... Pepper uh, Roundtable. Wait, wait, wait. So what what would you give that rating of the song? I would give it a 10 on 10. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. no, I'm with you. I'm going to give you some more songs by Brothers Osborne. I'll have you listen to them. To yeah. See what you think. Because they're like your version. There's romantic version, which I'm a sucker for. And there's the country party versions, which I'm also really a sucker for. They're just fun. You know, they just, they made the whole Stampede show fun. They just made it fun. I will go again. And they, that was back in 2019, right before COVID took over. So, but yeah, that was great. I'm going to get, Rose Osborne's always have, have a 10 for me. So, but yeah, no, anyway, in, real, in question to your panel, I think it'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, let me pull up my uh, the Aerosmith album thingy, thingy majiggy. Oh, Michael says I'll be open. I'd be open to this idea. Well, good. Well, I think Michael would be down for it. My Michael knows his stuff. Oh, I know my Beatles stuff. Oh, he. I know Royce would say yes for sure. Well, it depends what he's got going on, but I bet you'll say yes. But uh, I, I, I can't contact Chris Elliott because I don't have. <laughs> Any contact information? Well, you, for you'll him. just have to ask him what we see him on Sunday. Yeah, because I think it would be cool to do that. I don't see why not. I mean, I don't see why not. So it was to my no last Friday. I was talking about the Ultimate Grace hits. What I meant to talk about Aerosmith was the fact that that they're celebrating their 50th anniversary of their of their landmark album get your wings aerosmith will be releasing limited edition vinyl of it on may 17th limited to numbers one through 1974 to honor the wow. year of the album's release the triple platinum record will be gold sparkle vinyl with an embossed gold foil jacket aerosmith will be selling lots of new merch as well so throughout their 50-year career the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band has sold more than 150 million albums and streamed into the billions. Billions. So, yeah, that's what I was pointing out. Is that the fact that Aerosmith will be releasing, like, uh, uh, in celebration of their 50th career spanning career, um, they're going to be doing, like, a reissue of Get Your Wings. And I like that. That album is great. I have it on vinyl. I don't have it showed right now because I don't want to. Um, get my other album. I don't have any Aerosmith album, to be honest. I wish I did. You jump on it. But, um, but Get Your Wings is such a great record. Such a classic record overall. And, um, their early stuff, too, is just fantastic, in my opinion. You know, like from rocks to, um, to, uh, boy, to their, oh, uh, man. Rocks, mirror, I think it mirrors, I think. I think so. But a whole bunch of their um, early works that I can't remember at the time. I should have been prepared, sorry. And, um, but uh, I think it's great. And, you know, and they're definitely one of the Americana rock and roll. I call them Americana in ways, I would think. But they're definitely one one, one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. You know, it's like I've I've had the honor to see him live in uh, Shining, Wyoming, in 2015, and that was just that was just a great concert. Oh, I'm so, and so and and of course, you know, get a great yeah, hit. I could do that. Yeah, Lisa. Well, I know what Lisa's doing. Yeah, but the I'm not gonna lie that the gold sparkle vinyl with the gold foil sounds very tempting. It does. It does sound very tempting. What are you doing, baby girl? What well, go big or go home. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to add it to my list, but I think it's great for doing that because that is a landmark album, and I really think, you know, Get Your Wings really showed people, you know, who Aerosmith is as a band and what they're And you got to make sure you have enough money for uh, Cheap Trick. 
don't have to worry about that. I got covered. And then, um, oh, Alpha Bon Jovi. I need to do that one too. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that one. I haven't forgotten. I'm like, oh. Yeah, in all cases, I think I'm going to get that cassette of Bon Jovi's upcoming album because I have my like, new cassette player. So, but, um, but yeah, but Aerosmith, you know, I don't know where they stand touring wise, but I'm glad that the band is still healthy enough and um, and enough to re- to release the Get Your Wings. So I'm happy with that. I'm looking up closely for. Tw- I have a small 21 pile shirt on sale if you want it. I'm serious. You know, it's just stuff. Uh, we we feel up to it. Just uh. Call me on Messenger. Like on video, I can show you the share if you want, I'll ship it to you. It's on sale right now. So, but I'll show it to you. It's, it's black. It's small, though. I don't know if you fit in small, though, but it's size small. But I do have a share available. Just let me know. I'm serious, too. I've been selling clothes, people. But, um, get your wings. Again, it's just like Lord of the Flies. That's a good one. Same old, same old song and dance. I love that song. You ever heard that one, James? Uh, don't same remember if I've heard it. Same old song and dance, my friend. It's a very like rock and jazzy tune, which I like. It was, it's, oh, it's very catchy. Very relatable, too. In many, many ways. So, yeah, all you Aerosmith fans, might want to check that out. Yeah, maybe we'll take a little sneak peek here see see what it is. What it is here? Do this one handed. So give me a second, guys. Do this one handed here. Okay. Well, just, well, if you know somebody who's looking for something, let me know, will you? I need to get rid of it. It's been in my closet forever. Uh, let's see. Let's take a sneaky peek. I'm doing this with, well with my casted arm too. It's typing. Da, 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 do the second oh, let's see here. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so get your wings 50th anniversary limited edition LP trackless t shirt. Also, if you get them like in a t shirt, if you get a sweatshirt. So for a t shirt, it's $77.99. That's not too bad. And then with the long sleeve shirt, it's $94.99. Now, just for the LP, which I'm looking at, that's only $45. Four six dollars in total would be close to to like uh, fifty. That's not too That's bad. Not, yeah, I'd be okay without the shirt. But I will say it looks really nice. Hmm. So it says here that celebrating the 50th anniversary of their landmark and getting rings. This deluxe edition is limited. <laughs> I just say all that mumbo jumbo. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. Well, foil and encased in black poly lined sleeves, preserving the quality and sound of this iconic album. Inside, fan, oh, you're welcome. Fans will find a 70s era Aerosmith logo sticker and a replica of a vintage ad adding to the nostalgia of the celebratory release. Get Your Wings is not only R- RIAA triple platinum certified, but also marked the band's first collaboration with producer Jack Douglas who went on to produce the next three albums for the band and was instrumental in shaping the sound that would define Aerosmith for decades. Truth. Truth. Recorded at New York's Record Planet and launched with a tour that started at the Orpheum Theater in Boston on March 9th, 1974, Get Your Wings Solidified. Aerosmith's place in rock history with 74 shows across the U.S., it includes the classic same old story, same old song and text. That's a good one. I love this song. Train ki- kept a rolling. Lord of the Fives. I like that song. Lord of the Fives. I think Lord mm-hmm. of the Fives is very underrated. And then uh, Seasons of Wither and More. So track list. You got side one. Same old song and dance. Lord of the Fives. Space. Women, Women of the World. I like that one. SOS. Side two is SOS. Train, train kept a rolling. Seasons of Wither. Paradox Box. That Paradox Box is really good. 
Please note, due to custom pressing process, each unit will be slightly different in coloration. And the limit is four per customer. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, I I do have, I have two, oh, I have three arrows, I'm sure, so I'm okay with not having any more, but I'll be more than happy to just get the vinyl of it. Do they have any cassette versions of it, too? They do not. Darn it. <laughs> Well, wow, I think the vinyl there. sounds really awesome. I would go with the vinyl one. Would you go with the vinyl? Would you go Dang. with the shirt or without the shirt? Whatever you want. No, well, what would you get? I would get the I would get the vinyl. I'm the, I'm on the same boat. I would get the vinyl too. But the, it looks good. I mean, the gold is perfect and. But that's American, pretty. so. Looks very nostalgic in many ways. And that album is nostalgic. It you know, really kicked off their career. So that's something spun my radio. I can't believe I forgot to talk about this. But, but I'm happy that they're doing this. I think it's a nice way to to honor the legacy of Aerosmith and um and all that jazz, which I'm for. You know, I've been listening to Aerosmith since I was like six years old. I'm forty two now. A stressed forty two. Hi. And <laughs> and you know, it's just uh, uh, you know, it's just been a blessing. You know, it's, they actually been a blessing my family, for that matter. Uh, my sick mother, you know, mm -hmm. you should get the vinyl, but it's limited to the one that. Yeah, I'll think about that. We'll see. We'll see, Lisa. We'll see. I'm waiting for a couple things. I kind of sort um bought some um sports cards the other day. So wow. I kind of um, need him for something, so. <laughs> ah. But um, but you know, my sick mother, she loves Aerosmith. She was like in high school when they were they, when they first emerged in the music scene, and uh, and um, she never got to see him in concert, but she got to hear their mu music for the first time on the radio and all that. So I remember my mom telling me all about that when I was younger, and then. At the time, it was just my eldest brother and I, you know, and uh, my eldest brother, Matthew, he was into Aerosmith a lot in his teens, and that's how I got hooked, because <laughs> I remember hearing, like, Love in the Elevator to um, uh, Sweet in Motion to Dream On, just blaring from his room, just blaring, and when Pump came out, you know, the album Pump, my brother went straight to the record store and got got the CD. It's back when we lived in California. Went, went straight to the record store to get the CD, brought it home, and played it. And I remember hearing the whole Pump album blurred from his room. And, and in fact, to this day, I do have um, Pump on vinyl. I just can't show you guys anything because of this. I don't want to. I don't want to. No. What's up? My left elbow is still bad, too, so I don't want to. Get anything angry at the moment, which so, but the pump album was that's probably one of my favorite Aerosmith top five Aerosmith albums. Pump that's that was that was a perfect, perfect, perfect album, just perfect, just perfect, it's nostalgic. Also, the Get a Grip by Aerosmith that was that was pretty good too. How long have they been together since what year? Not too soon. Well, whoever it's 50, 1974. Wow, that's a long time. It's 50 years, Shane. Till now, till 2024. Wow. 50 years. And that's a blessing. Nice. And, you know, and, uh, and, you know, it's going to be sad, too. It's going to be hard for me to let them go when, when they actually go back out and tour. It's going to be hard for me to let them go. It really is. <laughs> well, you let Kiss go, so you got to let them go, too. Who says I let Kiss go? I don't think so. I'm still fighting over it. Thank you very much. I'm <laughs> still afraid of it. Don't talk about sensitive topics, James. <laughs> well, it's the same thing because they're leaving. Uh, Errol Smith's doing their last tour. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stubborn, you know. I'm like, I mean, my top. What's okay? I'll just face it. The last time I went to Cheyenne was to see Kiss. Kiss is done, so I lost my whole purpose of going to Cheyenne, Wyoming. So. Unless there's something really good up there, I'm not going. So <laughs> I don't blame you. That's just that just shows you how stubborn I, stubborn I am, people. <laughs> but 
But, man, but, yeah, it, I think for me, like, you know, like, Air Smith go because they're retiring, you know, that's going to be hard because I've been listening since I was six. I'm 42, so, you know, and thinking about them, you know, leaving, I'm like, the music world? Well, I mean, as a band, but I know they're going to go on to other great stuff. I know Joe's in Hollywood Vampires, and I love HV. I'm waiting for my turn to see Hollywood Vampires live. If it if, if they go to Denver, I'll I'll probably go just for that. <laughs> but I would. Well, I mean, not just for Alice. I mean, you got Joe Perry, you got Johnny Depp, and then you got um, Tom Hen- Hendrickson, Crossbow and Scully. He's out there too. But they're, again, all them are going to do their own stuff, but them as a band, that's going to that's gonna lose a little mark on my heart. And if they do a Halloween show, it would be cool if Johnny Depp dressed up like Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, he would. Show. I, don't, I don't think he would do that. I don't see him doing that. That would be awesome to see him I playing think, the guitar as Captain good, Jack. The only good Halloween show that I could think of would be uh, Rod Zombie and Alice Cooper. That would be the only Halloween show, which I don't think is going to be happening. I don't think. But, but the Hootenanny, I still work for my chair for a Hootenanny. I just, a show. But, <sighs> clarifying, it's a show. But, I'm still waiting for my turn on that one. It'll happen. Uh, oh, yeah. Give it time. Give it time. Give it time. It takes, it takes time for good things to happen. So true. Time takes time. Mm, a lot. Ringo Star album. Mm. But, geez, I waited long enough for a rock band to get to our stampede, and we have cheap tricks. So, I'm excited for that one. And don't worry about the tickets. I already, I already have it figured out. Don't worry about Mm-hmm. But I, I'm excited though. I'm excited to see the trick. So wow, that'll be fun. That'll be a fun concert. <laughs> but other than that, guys, things I got for you today, guys. I'm just kind of, and we're about three minutes shy. You got anything else to talk about, James? Well, um, <clears throat> it's going to be a nice weekend. We're going to have uh, Easter dinner at, at a friend's house, my sister and her boyfriend. Oh, yeah. so Usually, I think that'll be fun because. Uh, his mom really likes me. She thinks I'm cool and everything. She likes talking to me. So I'll be sitting next to her at the dinner table, eat my turkey. Uh, you have turkey at Easter? Yeah. Turkey and ham. Usually it's just ham. And then next Friday, the 6th of April, we have the solar eclipse. I'm excited to see it. Well, I just got to get the special last, glasses to watch it. The last time I saw the eclipse, I was over at the University of Northern Colorado while on lunch break, and I got to sit with a friend. And It's going to be in area where I am, but I don't know if you'll get it where you are. I don't know. I hope it's not as cloudy. I mean, it was a little bit cloudy last time, but I got to see it while I was at University of Northern Colorado, so that was cool. Well, but, not this coming week, but the week after, on the 11th, of uh, it's a Thursday. I will be turning 55. Oh, 65? 55. 55. Yeah, 55. 65. No, not that old girl. 60. It's okay. 65 is a good number. I was born 69, 65. girl. Do the math. 55. <laughs> 65. 5. 6. 5. 6. 5. Got it. Six five people. Six five. <laughs> and my biggest dream on my birthday is to go to a jazz club. Jazz club. Oh, Lisa says you're gonna be eighty-five. No, I'm not gonna be eighty-five, Lisa. <laughs> so I've noticed lately that uh when I've been going to the lamp stream, well, I mod for him. Yeah, tell uh, tell me about the jazz club. Well, quick. there's you a jazz know. club that you I really want. There's a there's a couple of jazz clubs downtown Fredericton here that I really want to check out. Well, maybe one of them. I really want to go to one uh, that and and experience it live to see what it's like in a little place like that. And somebody told me you don't clap your hands when they're finished. You, you snap your fingers, but I don't know that. That's I think that's only for poetry readings. I think you clap your hands when when, when it's jazz. No, I think you snap your fingers. Oh yeah. I think so. All right, James, we got to. All right. I will do my outro. And in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you, you make. Yeehaw! All right. So listen to people. I love you all. 
stay safe, stay blessed. I'll be back Friday. I reckon keep punching. Bio, bio means keep punching people. I got so many stuff going on here. Not me related, but my family and I got stuff going on. So keep punching. And it's all good, too. It's just, just too much sometimes. But anyway, it's okay. But anyway, you guys take care. Stay safe. Stay blessed. I'll see you guys later. We're out. Godspeed. Bye. Bye.